Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. I'm Patrice and y'all know I have to do bling. So today's video, we are going to be blinging. All right, y'all, so before we get into today's video, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Also, check the other content, and if you are not subscribed, please click that subscribe button if this content is valuable to you. Also, head over to Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, and join the Craftable Things communities there as well. In addition, head over to Threads. We're also on Threads now, so check us out on Threads as well. So y'all, today we are going to be making a bling shirt and I'm going to walk you through the process of making a layered bling design. And we are going to be heading over to Etsy to get this done. So for today's project, we are going to need a cutter, a cutter that is capable of cutting rhinestone flock. We're going to need rhinestone flock, also hot fix rhinestones and we will need some KTM mask. Now there may be a few other materials that we'll need throughout the process like a wax pen in order for us to be able to pick up and place stray rhinestones and fill holes that we can't brush in and we will also be using an edge brush to brush those stones in. So let's head over, well let's head into Etsy or over to Etsy and see which design we will be using today. The file that we will be using today is from Coretta Created It, and you can purchase this file from Etsy. And this is the file or the Etsy page. And on the Etsy page, we see the thumbnail and the design is Praying Mama. And you always want to make sure you check and see what size rhinestones will be needed for your project. And this will require SS10 rhinestones and we're going to be using hot fix because we're going to be placing this onto a shirt or a bag all right and so the next important thing that you want to make sure you check is the size of the design and she has it listed on her thumbnail and that size is 11.247 inches wide by 7.202 inches high this is very important this will make or break your cut Okay, so you want to make sure that you jot down the size of the template. Okay, then if you want more information, we're just going to head over to learn more about the item. And she just lets you all know this is not a physical product. This is a digital download. And it just lists some of the information that's in the thumbnail. It lists some of that information. She also has how many rhinestones you will need. So if you're going to be using the same colors that she has in her thumbnail, these are the amount. However, you'll know that you can change the color of the rhinestones if you choose. And she just has other important information. No refunds or exchanges. And also, you may not sell this template, but you are allowed to sell merchandise with this template on it. So we're just going to download it. And if you download the file and you can't find it, all you have to do is click onto your icon at the top and select my purchases. And once you select your purchases, the item will come out and then come up and then you just want to select download files. Once you click download files, the file will be downloaded into your downloads folder on your computer. Now that I've downloaded it, I need to upload it into Cricut Design Space because yes, we will be using our Cricut to cut today. And so I am going to just simply click upload and I'll walk through the process with you all. I already have it here, but I'll walk through the process with you to show you how to do it. So we're going to select upload image. Then we will select browse. After we select browse, we want to make sure we access our download folder. Okay. and here at the very top is our design praying mamas ss10 rhinestone template so we're just going to click it and you want to select open i am working on a macbook so if you're working on a pc your terminology may be a little bit different but this is still how it will work also on your on your computer all right, so now it's uploaded and everything looks great. So I'm just going to select upload in the bottom right corner. 
we're going to select onto the image and we are going to click add to canvas. Now that it's added to our canvas, the first thing we want to note is the size of the design. So before you even click out of the design, as you see, it's all grouped together. Before you click out of it or ungroup it, you want to make sure that the entire design is selected as is and it tells you the size of the design. And right now it's telling us that this is a 7.45 inch by 4.77 inch wide design and those numbers look off. So now it's time for us to resize the image and I am just going to select inside of the width, I am going to put 11.247. Now because it is locked, because our lock button is locked, it is going to automatically adjust the height for us, okay? If it's unlocked, you are going to have to manually place it, place the measurements inside the width and the height. But because it's locked, I only need to place the measurement inside of the width. So I am going to put 11.247, and then I am just going to tap over. And when I tapped over, as you note, notice, it automatically adjusted the height to 7.202. So that is perfect, okay? Occasionally, it might be off by one thousandth of an inch. You can adjust it if you want, but it's not really going to make a difference to your, your cut and you being able to brush in if it's a very minimal uh, difference. But we are all set and this looks good. So now what we're going to do is, and I'm just going to reduce our screen size a bit. But now what I'm going to do, everything is still selected. As you see, it's all highlighted. We need to ungroup this because if you notice, this is a layered design. And so there's different colors in the design. You want to separate it because some of these rhinestones are touching. They're very close. The different colors are touching, but that's because you need to separate the design. Okay. So I am just going to select ungroup and we are going to ungroup the design. And as you notice, now it's in four different individual parts. So next I am just going to move this over and see how it's all connected. So praying is one, and then you have the outline of mama, and we're going to move that. And then we have the inside, which is ombre. Okay, so I reduced the screen a little bit more so that we could see everything. I did not adjust the size, I just reduced the screen here at the bottom, and everything looks good. So this is how I'm going to cut it, and so I'm just going to select everything and I am going to change the color to pink. I'm gonna make them all the same color. So now we have everything set up the way that we want. You can place boxes around each individual design so that it's a little bit easier for you to decipher which part of the design it belongs to which part. So in order to do that, all you have to do is select each individual part of the design, head over to your shapes, and you want to place a rectangle around your design. Typically I don't do this because I kind of like to um, just cut it out with scissors, but you can definitely do this. So I'm going to unlock the proportions button at the top, and then we're just going to kind of fit this on top of the design, and then I'm going to send it to the back so that I can actually see how much space I really need. So remember, if you're working with a design that's uh, pretty close to 11 and a half inches wide and you only have a 12 by 12 mat, you do wanna pay attention to the size. So I am just going to scale this down a bit. Now, once you have your bounding box around, all you have to do is select both parts of the design and then you are going to simply attach it together so that it is cut out together, okay? So what that is gonna do is that's going to create a box which will be easier for you to just peel away and you won't have to worry about cutting in between each individual image. And so if you wanna do something like this, then you will just repeat those steps for each individual part, okay? so. 
I won't necessarily be doing that. So I do have it exactly how I will be uh, doing it. So let's go ahead and click make it. We will be placing this on a mat. And the mat size we're going to use today is going to be a 12 by 24 because the 12 by 12 is going to be too small for this particular design. As you guys see here, it's almost 15 inches long when all of the parts are separated. All right, so I'm just going to kind of move that down just a little bit. And when you have these types of designs where there is an ombre effect, you do want to make sure that you kind of place it so where you can tell exactly where that cut line is supposed to be. All right, so everything appears to be lined up pretty good. I'm just putting a little space in between each part of the design. And now we are ready to cut this. So I am going to select continue. Then we will select the device that we're going to be using today. And we're using the Cricut Maker 3. And for the material setting, the material setting that we're going to be using today is the medium cardstock. I want to see how this is going to do with my Cricut Maker 3. However, I do have a custom rhinestone flock setting that I input myself. And for that setting, if you want to do something like that, you would have to click Browse All Materials. Once you go to Browse All Materials, you're going to go to Material Settings. Then you're going to scroll all the way down. And then you will select Add New Material. Once you select Add New Material, it's going to ask you, uh, or it's going to request a name for your material. And so you will just put your material there, the name, whatever you're gonna name it. And I'm just going to say ABC for now. Well, rhinestone flock, I'm just gonna say rhinds. We're gonna click save. Once you click save, it's going to take you back up and you just need to adjust your pressure and we're going to place this at about 340 pressure, 340 to 350. Everything else will remain the same. And then you would click save. But I'm going to use the medium cardstock setting today. So I'm just going to click delete. Yes. And now we're going to select medium cardstock. And I will meet you all over at our Cricut. We're not going to adjust the pressure. Uh, we're going to leave it at the default pressure. Okay y'all, so now I've already loaded the rhinestone flock onto our Cricut cutting mat and you want to make sure that it's on there securely. However, this time when I placed the rhinestone flock inside of the machine, I noticed it start to lift up a little bit as it was cutting. And because it did that, I knew that I needed to stop the cut right away. So make sure that you are watching your machine and your material before walking away from it. And so I placed painter's tape around the edges of the flock onto the cutting mat just to help it to stay nice and secure because I did not want it to have any more problems with cutting that block. So now we are ready to get going and we are going to cut this. This took maybe about 40 minutes to cut, maybe not that long either, but it might have taken 40 minutes to cut. And because I placed everything on one mat, this should go fine, but if you don't have a 12 by 24 mat, you can certainly use two 12 by 12 mats to get this done. So now we're going to remove the flock from the mat. And I just want to show you this area. So this did a double cut because I did not remove the flock when I put it back through the machine. So it kind of cut uh, a double cut. So that's going to be fine. It's only a few. But if you ever have to do that, then you might just want to uh, replace the entire piece of flock or whatever material that you're using. All right, so we're going to see how this cut. Remember, we use the medium cardstock setting. 
with our Cricut Maker 3. Now you probably, if this is your first time cutting flock, you will want to test out uh, the different material settings to see what works best for you and your machine. And as you guys see, I do have extra cuts, but that is, it should be the only area that that happened in because I just did not want to change my placement on the board. So everything looks like it cut out. Uh, the only thing I'm gonna have to do is I am going to have to remove some of these dots because as you see, all of the dots did not stay back. So that's what I mean by checking your cut settings. Ideally, you want all of these to be removed when you remove it from the backing. So all I'm gonna do now for this material, and every material is different. If your paper is thinner, you don't want to do this. I am just going to place this on the back of here so that I don't have to remove all of these dots by hand. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm just going to kind of squeeze you this down a bit so that these can stay onto the backing. Now I'm just using the squeegee to kind of help make those dots stay onto the backing. And I usually do this when I have this happen to me. So everything is all set and I removed all of the rhinestone dots. I'm going to be using these chopping mats from, well, you can get some from the Dollar Tree. However, I got these from Amazon. A link will be listed below to them in the description. And this is just to help make sure that my template stays usable for years to come. And so I'm just going to place these on top of the chopping mat so that we can get ready to brush them in. So today we'll be using rhinestones from the Baby's Booty and these are the three colors that I'm going to start with. I'm starting with Labrador, Rose, and Capri. And I am going to get ready to brush these stones in. The next item that you're going to need is your edge brush and we are going to brush this in with that. You can get this from Amazon, you can get it from your local hardware store, or you can get an edge brush from off of the baby's booty if you want this cute purple edge brush. So, so to get the rhinestones into the circles, I pour a lot of rhinestones on top of the template and then I brush in a circular motion. This works best for me. However, there are some times where I may need to find extra flock dots and my pen pen weeding tool will take those flock dots out easily while it's on the template. So now I'm just going to continue brushing in the rhinestones in circular motions. Now that we have our rhinestones into place, I'm just going to brush the extra rhinestones to the side and put them back in the container. Now I'm going to take my wax pen and just search for any extra rhinestones and also use the wax tip to place rhinestones into empty circles. All right, y'all. So... We're done with the first part of our template and I got some KTM mask, which is transfer tape for hot fix rhinestones. So you want to make sure that you have the correct type of transfer tape. Regular transfer tape for vinyl will not work for you. So I'm just going to... So now we're ready to place this on top. And I'm just going to kind of bend it up a little bit like a U and then just let it fall. I kind of try to do it in all one motion because you don't want to lift it up. Once you commit to it, once you get ready to place it down, you have to commit. If not, you will mess up the stones. So I am just using my hands to kind of brush over my design to make sure that it all connects to the transfer mask and then we're going to pull it up. And you kind of want to go slow because just in case they all don't stick, you can kind of push it back down to make sure that the rhinestones are nice and stuck to the transfer mask. Once the transfer mask is down, you just want to go ahead and check all of your stones to make sure that there is adhesive on the back of all of them. And I do have one that I want to just go ahead and replace. This will help you to avoid losing any rhinestones once you wash your stone. I'm gonna go ahead 
head and replace them. And there we have it. And then I'm going to place the backing back on top until I am ready to press it. And this is just another piece of transfer mask that I've put on the back of the backing. So we're all done and this is ready to be placed onto our shirt. So I'm going to continue placing the rhinestones into the other parts of the template so that we can get our shirt done. Today we're going to be using the Vivor Auto Heat Press to press our shirt and the first thing I'm going to do is lint roll the shirt. Now you can lint roll your shirt under your press or you can lint roll it on the desk. I'm going to show you that also. Sometimes I do it this way and then I'll press the shirt and I only press it for about 10 seconds because then I'll also use the table to help me make sure everything is aligned correctly. It's kind of easier for me to do that and not be underneath the heat press doing that. So now I'm just going to place the template onto the shirt just to give me an idea of placement of where I want it to be. And you want to make sure that you get your highest part, the highest part of your template onto the shirt so that you know exactly where it's going to go. The worst thing that can happen is, is that you place a part of the template down and you need to layer the top part and your top part is touching your collar or it does not fit in the space above. So now that I know exactly where I want things to be placed, I'm just going to peel the backing away a little bit. And once I peel the backing away, I'll be able to kind of stick the KTM mask on the shirt and that will help to make sure that it is placed exactly where I want it to be. It says place, it's now time for us to take our shirt and press it. And so today we're going to be pressing at 350 degrees for 12 seconds. That is what the baby's booty recommends for her stones. Depending on the stones you have, you want to check with your manufacturer to see the best time and temp for you. And so I'm just going to press the button so that our top plate can go down. And now it is all done and everything looked good all the stones stayed on there and so now it's time for us to layer the other parts to the shirt so we're going to layer the first part which is going to be the top of the word mama and this is an ombre design and so sometimes your stones can shift and so to fix it all you have to do is turn it over get your wax pen or tweezers out and place it right back into place and it will be as if nothing was ever wrong and so now i'm just going to match this up based on her design and sometimes you do have to look back at the design on your screen just to see exactly where the parts go but this fit perfectly and so now we're going to press that top down again and we are going to reveal it because with speeding up your video it goes quickly and super fast and oh my goodness this already looks beautiful so now it's time for us to layer the bottom part of the ombre and I am just going to make sure that it matches up in those missing holes so just make sure that you look at that so that you can match it up correctly based on the missing holes and I also like to make sure that the row on the far left is aligned and that will help me make sure that everything falls into place and this is falling into place beautifully. I ended up switching the capri color out for rose AB. I just thought that that would be super super pretty. And so now it's time for us to go ahead and press our third part of the design. Okay, this shirt is looking perfect and now it's time for us to layer the fourth and final part which is the word praying and you just need to match it up inside of the slots, the open parts that's there. Make sure you double check with the actual design layout on the screen and this will help you place everything exactly where you want it to go. But y'all, this looks absolutely gorgeous. And so now we're going to get ready to press this down also and I'm pressing everything at 350 for 12 seconds just because I want to make sure everything adheres correctly. You can press it on the back just to give it a little bit of extra heat if you'd like to. Turn it over and press on the back. But y'all, this looks 
stunning this looks absolutely amazing i love this design and of course y'all know i love those rhinestones All right, y'all, so we are all done. And y'all, that shirt was absolutely beautiful. As you see, I don't have the final shirt to show you guys because guess what? It was so beautiful that I could not wait to give it away to a special mama. So that shirt has already been given away. If you are interested in that design, a link will be listed below in the description. It was absolutely easy to use. Create Coretta created it. And she did a fantastic job. Also, Coretta Created It is her Etsy shop. So if you're interested in that, please check her out over on Etsy and make you a praying mama shirt. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to head over to Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok and join the Craftable Things communities there as well. And don't forget, if this is your first time here and you are not subscribed, please make sure to hit that red subscribe button below the video. But that's it for today, y'all. Thank you all so very much for watching. Until next time.